Hello, and welcome back to Who Died Today, America. In today's video, we'll be sharing important updates about 13 individuals who have passed away today, August 7th, and in recent days. Special tributes to honor these legends will be featured later in the broadcast. Before we delve into these stories, we request a moment of your time. If you value our tributes and news, please show your support by giving this video a like. Each like encourages us to deliver more news, more updates, and more of the content you love. We're grateful for your continued support. Now, without further ado, let's begin with our stories. Number 13. Carmen Extravaganza, hailed as a pioneering force in the American ballroom culture, passed away at 62 in August 5th. Born in Spain, Carmen moved to the U.S. as a teenager and embarked on a journey of self-expression and transition, undergoing sex reassignment surgery by the age of 18. By the 1980s, she was a prominent figure in New York City's ballroom scene, particularly after joining the House of Extravaganza. Her story reached wider audiences through the iconic documentary Paris is Burning in 1990, wherein she candidly discussed her transition journey. The film's release prompted her return to Spain, where she continued to champion LGBTQ plus rights and even initiated a Spanish chapter of the House of Extravaganza. Upon returning to the U.S. in 1997, Carmen was honored to carry forward the legacy of Angie Stravaganza, becoming the house mother. Throughout her life, she was a vocal advocate for the ballroom community, featuring in another documentary, How Do I Look?, in 2006. Her dedication was recognized in 1999 when she was inducted into the Ballroom Hall of Fame. In a heartwarming gesture, her hometown of Rhoda celebrated her legacy in 2022 by naming her the godmother of its international LGBT Pride Day festivities. Sadly, a year later, after a brave battle with lung cancer, the world bids farewell to a trailblazing icon. Carmen Extravaganza's spirit will forever dance in the annals of LGBTQ plus history. Number 12. Bob Murdoch, the esteemed Canadian professional ice hockey defenseman and coach, has passed away on August 3rd at the age of 76. Born on November 20th, 1946, Murdoch carved out a significant 12-season stint in the National Hockey League, proudly representing teams like the Montreal Canadiens, Los Angeles Kings, Atlanta Flames, and Calgary Flames. Beyond his playing career, Murdoch established himself as an accomplished coach in the NHL, he helmed the Chicago Blackhawks for the 1987-88 season and later led the Winnipeg Jets to an impressive turnaround during the 1989-90 season, resulting in his Jack Adams Award win as the NHL's Coach of the Year. Murdoch's coaching stints also extended to the Calgary Flames, San Jose Sharks, and multiple teams in Germany's Deutsche Eishockey Liga. An international player for the Canadian national team in the late 1960s, Murdoch's promising journey in the 1970 Ice Hockey World Championships was halted due to the national team's withdrawal. His accolades speak volumes of his commitment to the sport. With two Stanley Cup championships in 1971 and 1973, while with Montreal and an appearance in the 1975 NHL All-Star Game, Bob Murdoch's impact on ice hockey, both as a player and a coach, will be fondly remembered by fans and peers alike. Number 11. Walter Charles, a luminary of the Broadway stage, has passed away at the age of 78 on August 4th. His extensive and impressive career spanned over five decades, leaving an indelible mark on the American theater scene. Charles first graced the Broadway stage with his debut in Greece in 1972. His credits also encompass legendary performances in shows such as Cats, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber of Fleet Street, and Anything Goes. One of Charles's standout moments was originating the role of Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol at the theater at Madison Square Garden in 1994. Beyond the footlights of Broadway, Charles showcased his versatility on screen with roles in films like A Fine Mess, Fletch Lives, and Weeds. His television appearances include renowned shows like Cagney and Lacey, Law and & Order, and its spin-off Law & Order Criminal Intent. With a plethora of achievements and awards under his belt, Walter Charles was more than just an actor. He was a theater institution. His passing is a significant loss to the Broadway community and his countless admirers. He will be remembered for his unparalleled talent, dedication to his craft, and the rich legacy he leaves behind. Number 10. 
Tristan Hansinger, a renowned American cellist celebrated for his significant contributions to free jazz and improvisation, passed away on August 5th at 73 in Trieste. Born on October 23, 1949 in Burlington, Vermont, Hansinger's tryst with the cello began early, performing concerts by the age of 12. His classical training at the New England Conservatory in Boston paved the way for a career that spanned continents. The 1970s saw Hansinger migrate to Montreal to dodge the draft, wherein he dabbled in improvisational music. Eventually, he relocated to Europe in 1974, marking Amsterdam as his hub. His long-standing collaborations with jazz legends like Cecil Taylor and Derek Bailey stand testament to his musical prowess. Beyond his musical abilities, Hansinger was known for his unique appearance, often compared to a slapstick actor in terms of body language. His diverse ventures included forming Fields in Miniature in 1991 and teaming up with notable bands like the pop group and the X. Eric Vandenberg, a Dutch journalist, beautifully encapsulated Hansinger's essence, likening his compositions to a child's drawing. Hansinger's own words reflect his passion. Simple things fascinate me. His ability to bridge generations through his music was unparalleled. As the world mourns the loss of this musical stalwart, Hansinger's legacy in free jazz and his childlike wonder will forever reverberate through the strings of the cello. Number 9. Charles Ogletree, the celebrated American attorney, influential law professor, and founder of Harvard Law School's Charles Hamilton Houston Institute for Race and Justice, passed away on August 4 at the age of 70. Born in Merced, California, on December 31, 1952, to farm-working parents, Ogletree's illustrious journey in the legal realm began with a BA and MA from Stanford University and later a JD from Harvard Law School. With a career stretching from representing iconic figures like Tupac Shakur and Anita Hill to becoming a revered professor at Harvard, Ogletree's contributions to the American legal landscape are manifold. He often shared his insights on television programs like Nightline, Good Morning America, and Meet the Press. In addition to these appearances, his lectures offered deep dives into topics of race and justice, including a memorable series on understanding Barack Obama's journey to the presidency. Beyond academia and media, Ogletree's commitment to community was evident. He founded scholarships in his hometown, Merced, and held significant positions on boards at institutions like Stanford University. Ogletree's relationship with the Obamas began at Harvard and remained steadfast throughout their political journey. Despite facing a plagiarism controversy in 2004, Ogletree's legacy remains intact with numerous awards and honors recognizing his contributions. His battle with Alzheimer's disease, diagnosed in 2015, showcased his enduring spirit, and even in the face of adversity, his commitment to justice and equality never wavered. The legal community, and indeed the nation, mourns the loss of Charles Ogletree, a beacon of hope, justice, and equality. His legacy will undoubtedly inspire generations to come. Number 8. James Cafiero, an esteemed American attorney and Republican Party stalwart, passed away on August 3rd at the age of 94. Born on September 21, 1928, Cafiero's journey in politics was inspired by his father, Anthony J. Cafiero, who himself served Cape May County in the Senate. A Princeton and University of Pennsylvania Law School alumnus, Cafiero was deeply rooted in New Jersey's political landscape. His service in the New Jersey General Assembly from 1968 to 1972 and later in the New Jersey Senate, with stints from 1972 to 1982 and 1990 to 2004, showcased his dedication to the first legislative district. As a testament to his leadership, Cafiero chaired the Appropriations Committee as a freshman senator and was later named Senate Minority Leader in 1975. His political acumen was further evident when he returned to the Senate in the 90s, notably defeating William J. Hughes Jr. in a tight race that led to a power-sharing arrangement in the Senate. Among his legislative efforts, Cafiero notably championed a bill in 1996 aimed at funding a minor league stadium in the Wildwoods. The news of his passing was shared by Ocean City Mayor Jay Gillian. As New Jersey mourns, Cafiero's legacy as a dedicated public servant remains etched in the state's history. Number 7. Django Edwards, American clown and entertainer, 
born Stanley Ted Edwards, passed away on August 5th in Barcelona, Spain, at the age of 73. Known for his unique fusion of traditional clowning with countercultural and political references, Edwards carved a niche for himself in the European cabaret tradition. Born in Detroit, Michigan in 1950, he ventured to Europe to study comedy and clowning, immersing himself in the art. Edwards's performances often took the form of one-man shows, gaining him a devoted following during his three decades of European touring. He was a key figure in the International Festival of Fools in Amsterdam, beginning in 1975, and enjoyed a strong fan base in the Netherlands and Germany. In the 1980s, he found a home in France and later Barcelona, where his unique performance style was well received. Over his career, Edwards produced four audio albums and released a DVD compilation of live performances in 2004. Notably, he also founded the Nouveau Clown Institute in Granollers, Barcelona in 2009, a training center specializing in clowning. Edwards leaves behind an indelible legacy in the world of alternative comedy and clown acts, having delighted audiences across Europe with his unique performances. Number 6. John Gosling, the former keyboard player for the iconic rock band The Kinks, passed away at the age of 75 on August 4th. The band's official social media announced the news of his passing, expressing deep sorrow and extending condolences to his family. John Gosling became a pivotal part of the Kinks in 1970, leaving an indelible mark with his contribution to the demo of the hit song Lola, among others. Fellow band members remembered Gosling with fondness and admiration. Mick Avery, the band's drummer, reminisced about the cherished moments, highlighting Gosling's impeccable musical talent and his engaging sense of humor. Dave Davies, the guitarist and lead singer, echoed the sentiments, recalling the profound impact Gosling had on the Kinks' music. Ray Davies, the lead singer and songwriter, paid his respects by wishing Gosling peace in his afterlife. Gosling's time with the Kinks, spanning from 1970 to 1978, was marked by significant musical achievements. After his tenure with the primary band, he co-founded Cast Off Kinks, comprising other former Kinks musicians, and continued to mesmerize fans until his retirement in 2008. His passing marks the end of an era for rock enthusiasts, but John Gosling's legacy, embodied in classics like You Really Got Me and A Well-Respected Man, will continue to resonate with fans around the world. Number 5. Adrian Vaughn, a paramount figure in the world of publishing, tragically passed away in a boating incident at the age of 45 on August 4th on Italy's Amalfi Coast. As president of Bloomsbury USA, her leadership steered the company to a 14% revenue boost during her tenure as COO. Her resume shines with prestigious roles, including managing Marvel Press at Disney and serving as the Vice President of Finance at Little Pym. A graduate of the College of William & Mary and NYU's Stern School of Business, Vaughn's trajectory in the publishing world was both rapid and impactful. She was instrumental in forming and sitting on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Board of the Association of American Publishers. Furthermore, she ardently championed against censorship, collaborating with organizations like PEN America, Vaughn's untimely death came during a vacation with her family. Their speedboat collided with a yacht, resulting in her tragic demise. Her husband, Mike White, sustained injuries, but thankfully their children were unharmed. The world of publishing has lost a beacon of innovation and leadership. Vaughn's passion for the industry and her dedication to inclusivity and diversity will remain as her lasting legacy. She was not just a key player in the world of publishing, but an advocate for change, progress, and excellence. Number 4. Ken Suarez, a standout figure in Major League Baseball, passed away at the age of 80 on July 29. Born on April 12, 1943, in Tampa, Florida, Suarez's remarkable journey in baseball began at Jesuit High School and saw him teaming up with legends like Lou Piniella and Tony La Russa in West Tampa's American Legion team. Suarez's talents fully blossomed at Florida State University, where he was named a 1964 first-team All-American by the American Baseball Coaches Association and even represented the United States at the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. His professional baseball journey kicked off with the Kansas City Athletics before stints with the Cleveland Indians and Texas Rangers from 1966 to 1973. 
Notable moments in his career include hitting his first major league home run against Mickey Lolich of the Detroit Tigers and breaking up a perfect game by Jim Palmer. Suarez, known for his excellent fielding, became a notable figure during his tenure with the Rangers. In 1974, he made headlines for becoming the first player on the team to submit a contract to arbitration, eventually leading to his decision to retire. Post-retirement, Suarez settled in Fort Worth, Texas with his wife, exploring various careers including aviation and radio. His contributions to MLB and his inspiring journey will remain etched in the annals of baseball history. Number 3. Nerman Kernkick, a standout Bosnian football player, passed away at the age of 30 due to a heart attack on August 5th. Born in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Nerman relocated to the U.S. when he was just seven and later became a proud citizen. With an innate talent for playing the left wing, he showcased remarkable ball control, adept dribbling, precise passing, and a knack for scoring goals. The soccer community widely recognizes him for his significant contributions, especially during his tenure with teams like Sarajevo and Tuzla City. Upon hearing of his sudden passing, FCBIH Grand Rapids stated, The loss of the phenomenal Nerman Krinkic deeply saddens us. Hailed as the best talent from Michigan, it was not just his skills but his immense heart that made him truly exceptional. The city of Grand Rapids and the broader soccer community will undoubtedly feel his absence. As condolences pour in from all corners, the Krenkik family is engulfed in profound grief. The loss of such a beloved figure is truly heart-wrenching. Our thoughts are with his family during this challenging time, and we hope they find the strength to navigate this loss, cherishing the indelible memories they shared with Nerman. Now it's time to remember the legends who passed away in the past years. Number 2. Roger E. Mosley, renowned actor, famous for his role in the original Magnum P.I. series, passed away at the age of 83 due to, to injuries from a car accident in Linwood, Los Angeles on August 7, 2022. Mosley graced all eight seasons of Magnum P.I., portraying Theodore T.C. Calvin, a helicopter pilot and close friend of Tom Selleck's character. His daughter, Chie, confirmed his death to The Hollywood Reporter, later posting on Facebook, my heart is heavy, but I am strong. I will care for mommy. Your love of almost 60 years, rest easy. Mosley's career was diverse, with celebrated performances in films such as Lead Belly, where he played musician Huddy Ledbetter, and others including The Mac, Hitman, The Greatest, and Darktown Strutters. Yet it was Magnum P.I. that truly catapulted him into the limelight seeing him in 158 of 162 episodes from 1980 to 1988. Mosley's character in Magnum P.I. was not just a Vietnam War buddy of Thomas Magnum, but an embodiment of the actor's personal beliefs. He insisted his character be a university graduate, a book and poetry lover, and a non-drinker, stating, I never get high, smoke, or drink on the show or in real life. That's not what I want black kids to see. Mosley slowed down his acting career in his later years, with his last appearances on the revived Magnum P.I. in 2018. His enduring legacy in Hollywood and his pioneering role as an African-American actor will forever be remembered. Number 1. David McCullough, renowned as a best-selling historian and author, passed away at the age of 89 on August 7, 2022. McCullough's work, known for its deep research and engaging writing style, spanned various periods of American history, bringing them to life for readers. His acclaimed works on Presidents Truman and Adams earned him Pulitzer Prizes, while other notable publications, such as his accounts of the Panama Canal and the Brooklyn Bridge, garnered both commercial and critical success. McCulloch was not just a writer, he had a way of living his work. For instance, he adopted the habits of some of his subjects, such as growing a beard similar to that of Washington Roebling during the period he was writing about the Brooklyn Bridge. He often said that he didn't just work on a book, but he worked in a book, immersing himself in its world. His prolific career also transitioned to the screen, with television adaptations of his books becoming successful. The HBO adaptation of John Adams and the film on Truman are particularly noteworthy. McCullough's voice was familiar to many, as he narrated the 1990 Ken Burns series, The Civil War, and provided historical context in the film, Seabiscuit. McCullough's legacy in the world of history and literature is immense. 
His body of work provides a treasure trove of information, insights, and stories that help readers connect with America's past in an intimate way. He will be remembered not only for the quality of his work, but also for his commitment to portraying history in a manner that is both accurate and compelling. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.